four and sixth grade. Welcome back to math. Lesson 25 today. We had a new power up. We'll see how you did on it. Hopefully you got the quiz all done to the best of your ability. Uh, your job on the top 12 was to name each figure illustrated. So number one is a segment because there's no arrows. Number two is a ray because of one arrow. Number three is a line because of both arrows. Number four is an acute angle. Five is a right angle. Six is an obtuse angle. Seven has three sides, it's a triangle. Eight has four sides, it's a quadrilateral. Nine has five sides, it's a pentagon. Ten has six sides, it's a hexagon. Eleven has eight sides, it's an octagon. Number twelve says a polygon whose sides are equal in length and whose angles are equal in measure is a regular polygon. So regular is the word we use for all same sizes. The mental math would have read something like this. In letter A, I added and got $4.64. B, I divided down to $6. C, subtracted 76 cents. D, multiplication 252. E, the fraction still equal whole number one. Added to the rest gives you a total of six. F, divide by four gives you nine. 30 out of 60 reduces to one half. And H, what number is three less than half the sum? Kind of like you're seeing a pattern on we're doing these mental math. So the first thing I do is add the sum of eight and 12 is 20. Cut it in half is 10. Three less than 10 is seven. Copy the problem down and try to solve that for problem solving. So I'm over here with this problem, guys, and I can see that I have a zero here. So that tells me I'm either multiplying by zero or I'm multiplying by five. Those are the only two ways I can get a zero here. And so how do I decide if it's uh, the 0 or the 5 is I look down here and said, what are we going to do to be able to get this thing um, to what it was? If this was a 0 here, guys, I wouldn't need three blanks, would I? Because it would just be two zeros. So I know this has to be a 5. Okay, so now I'm going to do the multiplication because I know the first number. 5 times... 6 is 30, that gives me the 0, carry the 3. 5 times 3 is 15, 16, 17, that gives me an 18 here. Now we're down to a number here and it's a 6. So my first thought was 1 because 1 times 6 is 6. My other choice though is it could be a 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. So now I have to decide how do I know if it's a 1 or a 6. Well if this was a 6 guys, 6 times 3 is 18 but I only have one blank there. So it can't be the 6, so I'm back to the 1. 1 times that is 6, 1 times that is 3, and now it's just addition. 0, 14, carry the 1, 5, and I have 540. So each of those blanks had two choices. It could be 5 or 0, it could be 1 or 6. I had to use the number of blanks there to make my decision to be able to get it. Great problem, good math thinking that needs to be happening to be able to get those 6. Okay, yesterday we were talking about reducing fractions and canceling when we multiply. And I said yesterday that, hey, when you cancel in multiplication, you can also cancel division because in division you're actually going to multiply. Today we're going to get that lesson. We're going to learn how to divide fractions today and uh, what we have to do to set it up so we can do it properly. The lesson reads like this. How many quarters are in a dollar is a way to ask how many one-fourths are in one whole. This question is the division problem. I'm going to take 1 and I'm going to divide it into 1 fourth. We can model the question with fraction manipulatives we used way back in investigation, one that we really didn't use. We see that the answer is 4, or 4 over 1. The reciprocal is 1 fourth. Likewise, when we ask the question how many quarters are in $3, we are asking a division problem, which is 3 divided by 1 fourth. Turn in the page. We can use the answer to the first question to help us answer the second question. There are four one-fourths in one, so there must be three as many one-fourths in three, thus there has to be twelve one-fourths in three. We found the answer to the second question by multiplying three by four, the answer to the first question. We will follow that same line of thinking for the next few examples. So we're supposed to analyze our own thinking about this question. How many quarters are in five dollars? Our thinking probably takes two steps. One, how many quarters are in a dollar? And then two, take my answer and take it times five. So I know that there's four quarters in one dollar, so five times four is 20 quarters in five dollars. 
Okay, they're starting out easy, guys, with division problems. Um, we don't always want to do that kind of thinking with bigger, harder division problems. So number one says, how many two-thirds are in one? And then they gave you in parentheses, hint, hint, that's one divided by two-thirds. Now what I want to point out to you guys is they're not going to give you that hint in the future. They're not going to give you the parentheses after a while. And so you need to memorize that it flips, doesn't it? The question was how many two-thirds are in one? Many of us might be tempted to write two-thirds divided by one. It's not. It's one divided by two-thirds to do those things. Now, guys, to do that problem um, is a multiplication problem. This is how we divide fractions. In your yellow folder, you see I wrote down three words, stay, change, flip. The first number stays the same. The second operation changes. We change division to multiplication, and we flip the second one. We give it the reciprocal. Okay, one times anything is anything. So my answer is three over two. That's why when we were reading, guys, they said how many quarters are there? Remember, it's four over one. One fourth flipped four over one to get the answer. Okay, now they've taken it to the next thing. You can say, take this one times three. So I take, stays the same, three, changes to multiplication, flips over. Now if I wanted to, guys, my whole number over one so it looks right. Multiply the tops, nine. Multiply the bottoms, two. And I have nine over two. I can switch that back to a mixed number. Divide, goes in there four times. And I have a half left over. It equals four and one half. Okay, so that's our stay, change, flip rule as we use those things. Example two, now we're just going to start getting into the fraction problems. One stays the same, changes, flips, multiply, and I have five over two. If you want, you could switch it to two and one half, just like you could switch this to one and one half if you wanted to, to get those answers. Now you've got two fractions, same philosophy. 3, 4 stays the same. Division changes to multiplication. 5 halves, 2 fifths flips to 5 halves, or we find the inverse. I multiply the tops, I get 15. I multiply the bottoms, I get 8. I simplify by dividing. 1 goes in there, I have a 7, and 7 eighths left over. Next problem stays the same, changes to multiplication. Flips over, multiply the tops, gives me 8. Multiply the bottoms, gives me 9. Problem solved. Cruising on, example 4 now gives you to a word problem form, guys. This word problem is a great one. Sam walks 9 tenths of a mile to school. On his way to school, he passes a bank, which is 3 fourths of a mile from his home. What fraction of his walk has Sam completed when he reaches the bank? I like what your book did here now, guys, as you go down to the solution. It says the whole walk is the distance to the school. Part is the distance to the bank. So I write a fraction of a part of a whole problem. I think it's a great way to think of how to set that up. So he, wrote, he went three-fourths of the total nine-tenths. Now that's the craziest looking fraction to us, guys. But just remember, this fraction just means division. So then I write it with my division bar, 3 fourths divided by 9 tenths. Okay, this I know how to solve. This I can set up in my brain because I understand part of a whole. If I just read the words, guys, I might have been tempted to write, he has to go 9 tenths, he did 3 fourths of it. Now I'm going to show you what happens when we do division in the wrong direction. Remember, there is no commutative property of division. So the correct way was this, stays the same, three-fourths, changes to multiplication, gets flipped over. Yesterday's lesson kicks in, I can cancel. Three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. Divide by two is two. Divide by two is five. Multiply the tops, five. Multiply the bottom, six. He did five-sixths of it, okay? The correct answer. I wrote the problem backwards by mistake. Does it make a difference? Stays the same. Changes to multiplication. Flips over. Canceling the same things. Canceling the same things. Multiplying the top, multiplying the bottom. And we remember, when I change the order, I get the reciprocal. Okay? So hopefully this will catch you guys. If I ask you 
what part of the way did he walk? He walked five six of it. I don't say how far did he walk. He walked six fifths of it. That's more than the whole trip. Okay. So if you set it up backwards, guys, you're going to get an improper fraction. That should hopefully clue you did it wrong. But we obviously don't want to set it up wrong. So I like the parts of a whole problem to get it set up the proper way. Okay, today, dividing fractions is kind of easy. You just need to remember those three world, rule, words, stay, change, flip. So the first fraction stays the same, change to multiplication, reciprocal or flip the second one, and then the rules from yesterday with multiplication kick in. I can cancel beforehand uh, if that helps to be able to get my answer. All right, we'll get ready for set for the problems. Six, we're ready to get started on the problems. Some of you have noticed I didn't read through page 178 with you on the rest of the lesson. You can see the little calculator symbol there, guys. Uh, your sixth grade teacher doesn't really believe in a calculator for sixth grade math. So if you ever want to read about how to use a calculator, feel free to. Um, but I don't really spend a whole lot of time going through all that stuff with you. Okay, let's get cranking on our assignment. Number one, 300. 24 students were given individual boxes of apple juice at lunch in the cafeteria. If each pack of apple juice contains a half dozen individual boxes, how many packages of juice were used? So I need to take 324 students and I need to divide them into the packages with their six in each package because it was a half of a dozen guys. And so I'm just going to divide six into 324. Goes in there five times, that's 30. Subtract 2, bring down 4, goes in there 4 times. So there was 54 packages of juice to feed all the kids. Number 2, use a ruler to draw a square ABCD 2.5 inches long. Then divide the square into two congruent triangles by drawing AC. So step 1, I'm drawing a square. That is two and a half inches long. If you're really gonna do this, guys, it probably won't even fit in your box. Your box is probably not quite two and a half inches, so you might get outside your box. And then I'm gonna label that thing A, B, C, D. So if you wanna shrink it down, feel free to shrink it down. Then they told me to measure and cut A, C. Okay. Number, letter A says, what is the perimeter of A, B, C? So I have two and a half plus two and a half, plus two and a half, plus two and a half. Okay, I'm gonna do two and a half times four. To do two and a half times four, I have to make it improper. So two and one half is two times two is four plus one is five over two times four over one. Cancel the two one, cancel the four two, five times two is 10. So the perimeter is 10 inches. B says, what is the measure of each angle in the square? Well, guys, squares are right angles, so B is 90 degrees. C says, what is the measure of each acute, acute angle in ABC? Well, if you see this angle right here, guys, this was 90, and I cut it in half with my diagonal. So if I take 90 and divide it by 2, I get 45 degrees. D says, what is the sum of the measures of the three angles of ABC? So this guy's 45, this guy's 45, and this guy is 90. 90 plus 45 plus 45 is 180 degrees. You should have learned that last year that a triangle always adds up to 180 degrees. Number three. Use this information to answer questions A through C. The family reunion was a success, as 56 relatives attended. Half of those who attended played in the big game. However, the number of players on the two teams were not equal since one team had only 10 players. A, how many relatives played in the game? So I had 56 relatives, and half of them played, so I divide by 2. That goes in there, two, four, one, six, eight. So 28 relatives played my answer to A. B says, if one team had 10 players, how many players did the other team had? So I had an answer of 28, 10 were on one team, so I need to subtract and get 18 players on the other team. C said, if the teams were are rearranged so that the number of players on each team was equal, how many players would be on each team? So what I really want is I want my 28 players divided evenly onto two teams. So 28 divided by 2 is 14. So there would be 14 players on each team. Answer to A, answer to B, 
answer to C. Number five, use prime factorization to find the greatest common factor of 54 and 72. So I'm going to do this one, guys, by division by primes. 54 divided by 2 is 27. Divided by 3 is 9. Divided by 3 again is 3. Divided by 3 one more time is 1. Now I'm going to do it with 72. 72 divided by 2 is 36. Divided by 2 is 18. Divided by 2 is 9. Divided by 3 is 3. And divided by 3 again is 1. Okay. Now to find them, I want the numbers that are in both lists. So I have a 2 in both lists, I have a 3 in both lists, and I have another 3 in both lists. So I take those numbers and I multiply them together. 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is 18. So my answer for number 5 is 18. This is the greatest common factor, how we can use, do, use prime factorization to get it. Number six, in the following statement, write the percentage of reduced fraction, then diagram the statement and answer the questions. Jason read 75% of 320-page book. How many pages did he read? How many pages did he not read? So, guys, I need to know that 75% is 3 fourths. Remember, percent is out of 100. Divide them both by 25. You got 3 fourths. Should be memorized. Now I'm going to go into 320. 4 goes into 32, 8 goes into 0, 0. Divide by my denominator, multiply by my numerator. So 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 8 is 24. I have an answer of 240 pages. That's answer to A. B says, how many did he not read? I need to subtract. So 320 minus 240. 0, can't, 12, 8. He has 80 pages that he didn't read yet. B, A. Turn the page of my book. How many three-fourths are in one? Remember, when it's one, it's always the reciprocal. I don't have to do the math, guys. I certainly can. It's one, stay, change, flip, right? And I got my answer. Then it says how many three-fourths are in seven-eighths? Seven-eighths divided by three-fourths stays changes, flips, cancel. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 4 into 8 is 2. Multiply 7. 7. Multiply 6. Simplify 1 and 1, 6. So guys, if you look at 7B already, you see that you have to know how to set it up the proper way, which is, in my mind, backwards order, if that helps you do with it. Okay? Number nine, write 84 and 210 as products of prime numbers, then reduce them. Let's do factor trees with this one. I have 84. Okay, I'm going to divide by 7. 7 goes into there 12 times. That's 3 and 4. That's 2 and 2. Here comes the prime factorization of 210. 210 is 21 and 10. This is 3 and 7. This is 2 and 5. So my 84 was 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. My 210 was 2 and 3 and 5 and 7. I'm going to draw a line here so I don't get confused. Okay, now it says for number 9, write the prime factorization of products of prime numbers. So guys, this is your answer for... A right here. Now I'm supposed to reduce that. Twos are gone. Threes are gone. Sevens are gone. I'm left with two fifths. So that's the second part of your answer for A. It's two fifths. B says, what's the greatest common factor? What did I cross out? A two a 3, and a 7. Now you multiply those together, guys. 2 times 3 is 6, times 7 is 42. So if I was asked to reduce 84 2 tenths, and I want to do it in one step, I would divide by 42 over 42. Okay? That's what they're trying to teach you with that lesson. Number 10, write the reciprocal of each number. So I take 9 tenths, and I flip it to 10 over 9. B, I take 8, 
8 is literally written like this, so the reciprocal is 1 eighth. C, we're practicing reciprocals of 2 and 3 eighths. Make improper. 16 plus 3 is 19 eighths. Then reciprocal, 8 nineteenths. Okay, that's good practice of that. Do not just flip the 3 eighths, guys. That'll get it wrong. D, what is the product of 2 and 3 eighths since the reciprocal? Any number times its reciprocal equals 1. E, what rule do you know about reciprocals that could help you answer D? I know E, inverse property. That's what the rule is. Any number times its reciprocal equals 1. Number 13. Write 2 and 2 thirds and 2 and 1 fourths as improper. 2 and 2 thirds multiplied and added is 8, 9, 10 over 3. 2 and 1 fourth, 8 plus 1 is 9 over 4. Then find the product of the improper's. I'm going to take 3 into 3 once, 3 into 9 three times. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. Switch to a mixed number, 7 and 1 half. Oh, my goodness. And then I was checking my math here that I did in my head, and I wrote down a 10, and I should have wrote down an 8, guys. So this is not going to cancel the 5. It's going to cancel the 4. That's going to give me 12 over 2, which would be 6. That was a close call there. Hopefully you were yelling at your computer screen saying, Mr. Bauer, you wrote down 10. It should have been 8. Okay, that was number 13. Last one on the front side is number 15. It says draw line AB. Then draw ray BC so that ABC measures 30 degrees to use a protractor. So, guys, I'm drawing AB, and then I'm thinking 1 o'clock, so it might have been helpful to draw it earlier, but I'm going to get about an hour. So this is line AB, and this is BC, and this is 30 degrees. My A should be over here. Sorry, not over there. Okay, so you're in the end, you're drawing this thing that looks like that. Two, what type of angle is ABC? Guys, that's small. It's acute angle. Flipping my answer key over, number 21. We have 3 fourths times 5 ninths times 8 fifteenths. Okay, 3 times 5 is 15. They're all gone. 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice. I'm left with this 2 and this 9 as I reduce. So I have 2 ninths. 23, today's lesson, we got a division problem. 8 fifths. I'm going to write it as I say, stays the same. Changes to multiplication, flips over. 5s are gone. Divide by 2 is 3. Divide by 2 is 4. So I have 4 thirds, which equals 1 and 1 third. 28. A regular hexagon is inscribed in a circle. If one side of the hexagon is 6 feet long, then the perimeter of the hexagon is how many feet? I said that wrong. I said 6 feet. I meant 6 inches. So you have a hexagon at six sides. Each one is six. Six times six is 36. It's 36 inches. They asked me for feet. How many inches in a foot? 12. So I take my 36. I divide it by 12. That gives me three feet. 29. A two-inch square was cut from a four-inch square to show the figure. What is the perimeter of the resulting polygon? Guys, you can do work with this, but if I read my problem easy, I know this is 4 and I know that's 4 because it was a 4-inch square. I know that if I drop this line down and this line out, I have a square. So 4 times 4 is 16 inches. 30, which negative integer is the opposite of the third prime number? Prime number, first one's 2, next one's 3, next one's 5. What's the opposite of 5? Negative 5. So your answer is which negative integer? Negative 5.